Designer Garden is proudly brought to you by Wonder and Effecto. Welcome to Designer Garden, I'm Andre Bimre. We're working in a very exciting space today. This is the front entrance to a home, it's a courtyard type of area. Now, this area obviously at some point had been way over planted, way overgrown. There's evidence of a lot of root growth on top of the soil. Now, the homeowner's cleared all that out already. Now, there's a koi pond going through the, the area which needs a bit of attention. And then of course the Abacus landscaping team have gone way ahead of themselves and laid a deck which has created quite a nice warm feel to it though. In addition to this area, there's one other area which flanks the driveway on either side. I'm very interested to find out exactly what the homeowner wants out of this space and how Tim interprets this. Let's go meet them and check this out. Today we're with Fred who's asked Abacus to design a, a, a garden for the front entrance to his home. Fred, thanks for calling us. What would you like us to do in that area? Well, you know, I'd like it to be warm and in, inviting to, to guests when they come with maybe a bit of an Eastern influence, uh, you know, maybe a Balinese or a Zen or, or something like that. It's really a very unique area. It's a small space, oh, strong courtyard enclosement. So it's important that we design something that makes a really wow first impression. I had a look at this space. You've got that rock water feature as a central focal point. Can we keep that as a focal point in the area? Yeah, I think the, the, the water would be great. And if you can incorporate it into the design, that would be first prize. Well, you know, when I look at that rock, it's a very dark rock. And that's really ideal to be associated with the Chinese style of garden, which it is looks different. as well. It does. And it's, mm. But it's different to the you know, raked gravel Zen garden or a Bali style garden. Would you be okay if we took a leaning towards a Chinese style? Yeah, uh, you know, I got Abacus involved in the first place because of the expertise that they have, and I, I really look forward to the design. Okay, well, I think what we need to do is go back to the design studio, work Absolutely. with the Abacus team, and look at what we can do in the detailing there to really make that space work well. Excellent, then we'll be back very soon to come and do the garden for you. Wonderful, I look forward to it. With a little guidance from Fred, the Abacus Gardens design team get to work on a plan for these interesting spaces. The enclosed courtyard, as well as the more open driveway, need different ideas to make them work. Very interesting plan. Love this plan. Now, what intrigues me most about the design element is that Fred wanted an Asian garden. And you specifically led him to a Chinese garden, rather than Japanese, European. Absolutely. You know, the space of the courtyard is ideal for a Chinese style garden for two reasons. Firstly, there's no lawn potential in that space. Absolutely. And secondly, you've got the pre-existing rock water feature, which absolutely okay. lends itself to a Chinese garden. I've just come back from China and they really, the water features there do look exactly like this one. It's got the mishap and rock, irregular rock style. Um, we have recommended, the Abacus team has recommended the Chinese style garden, you're absolutely correct in that regard. Um, and it's very different to your Japanese style in that the Japanese garden is very much contemplative. It's okay. a picture on the wall, you look at it, you enjoy it, but you don't, but touch, you don't it. touch it. Uh, your Chinese style garden is a backdrop to everyday life. People interact with it, the family is involved with it, and that makes it quite distinctly different. It's also very different to your European style garden. You know, in European style gardens, the geometry is very strong. Yeah. Man tends to dominate in that landscape. He's the center of his universe, if you like. Whereas in your Chinese style garden, it's very irregular, the design. It uh, really resembles nature in many respects. And man is part of it, he's not at the center of it. Okay. So it makes it quite distinctly different to your European and your Japanese style gardens. Now the fact that this is an enclosed courtyard and, and that you don't have a, a lot of room, does that present a challenge at all? Well, I think the whole area is quite unique. It is the it entrance is area. Different. And what we would like to create is an area where the visitor would pause and linger because A, it's soft on the eye, it's not too harsh. There's a lot of brickwork here. So as landscapers, we always have to make sure that the area is softened with plants. And then secondly, we want to create focal points so that there is interest and there is reason as you head towards the front door just to stop to admire. Okay. So you're now going to get all the plants and the hard landscaping and the 
deco elements you're going to get. That's right, yeah. It's time to start preparing for the uh, project, and uh, I think this is going to be an awesome project. It's not, it's not very often that we do a specific Chinese, a classical Chinese yeah, design. Yeah. But that sounds very interesting. I'm really keen to see what this is going to look like. I think it's going to look spectacular. Well, let's, going, let's see. After the break, the team deal with the remaining roots and unnecessary greenery, and Tim talks us through his plant choices for the area. The plants have arrived, and what you'll find interesting is that each plant has been chosen specifically to represent its Chinese symbolism. Welcome back to Designer Garden. The team tackled the gardening right off. The courtyard garden had become overgrown, and although Fred had taken out most of the plants, there's still unwanted root material clogging up the soil. Before any planting can begin, all of this needs to be removed. The driveway area has been left unattended for years, and the soil is undernourished. It now needs to be dug over before it can be composted and fertilized. And because he comes prepared, Andre brings in the needed missing nutrients. The team have prepared this area, they've taken out all the root material. The next step now is to bring in a load of compost. To add to that compost, we're going to be using Wonder Bone Meal, which is the organic form of phosphates. That's going to help with the root growth of the plants coming in. And then, of course, we're going to be using Wonder's Lawn and Foliage Fertilizer. Organic fertilizer, particularly blended for lawns and, of course, foliage plants. Being the area, being what it is, lots of foliage plants going in here, this is going to really just help boost them. We're going to be using about 80 grams per square meter, and this particular fertilizer does all sorts of things. It has micro elements, it has macro elements, and of course it stimulates little organic uh, activity in the soil, which helps release the nutrients and makes them more available to the plants. Great stuff. Food, glorious food. This rich compost will improve drainage and prevent massive soil erosion. Compost is a great base for the wonder fertilizers that will be added to the soil, ensuring it is nutrient rich. Any plants in these spaces will thrive after the fertilizer and compost treatment. Mountains and rivers form a very large part of China's geography. We also see references to mountains and rivers in Chinese art, literature and philosophy. So it's absolutely critical that we include mountains and rivers and their symbolism in our landscape design when we're doing classical Chinese gardens. Now in this case it's great because we've got this pre-existing koi pond which has got this very dark Pelindaba rock around the edge and you know what that's very typical of the gardens that we see from the Ming dynasty. Now, we do have a problem with this water. It's really murky, the fish are looking quite lethargic, and I can see that there's a big problem relating to the aerating and also the filtration of this pond. So one of the first things that we've got to do is sort out the koi water. Now, koi are often referred to as Japanese fish, and of course you're thinking we're doing a Chinese garden, but would you know that in history books we can actually see that koi originate in China. The garden design calls for a typically Chinese style, which doesn't have many flowering plants. So the team arrive with masses of foliage plants that will fill the spaces. Densely planted, these plants will eventually give the needed variety of textures for the garden. With some plants for color and others for height, we have a great mix to work with. The plants have arrived and what you'll find interesting is that each plant has been chosen specifically to represent its Chinese symbolism. Take for example this beautiful camellia. Now as you'll know camellias get beautiful big flowers, sometimes they're white, sometimes they're pink. And uh, you know flowers aren't that traditional in Chinese gardens, but a camellia is very much a Chinese plant and it represents and symbolizes wealth and prosperity. We've also chosen the sacred Chinese bamboo. It's your Nandina domestica. It isn't your typical bamboo at all, but it's a great plant because of the reddening of its leaves in autumn and also this beautiful red berry that it uh, bears on its branches. Chinese gardens don't typically have a lawn and that makes Fred's garden absolutely ideal because he's got a courtyard garden with no space for lawn. 
We also have to consider this in Chinese landscaping, and that is that they love to incorporate the different seasons. So we've done that by using the maple tree and also the silver birch. And they'll be great because as autumn approaches and as spring approaches, you're going to see either the lime green leaves or you're going to see that very auburn red sunset leaves as the winter approaches. But now it's time to start planting. Before the softer planting can start, the hard landscaping is brought in. One of the focal points in the courtyard garden are the terracotta soldiers. These replicas of the Emperor Qin Shu Huang's army bring the distinct Chinese style to this empty space. When you walk through a Chinese garden, you feel like you're walking through a bit of Chinese history. There's aspects of philosophy, of culture, of art and architecture, and it's a very exciting and interesting garden to be in. So I really love the fact that the Abacus design team chose these terracotta soldiers as focal points in this spot. It really adds value with respect to the rich historical heritage that China has. They're in fact replicas of warriors that are over 2,200 years old and they were really part of a tomb where the emperor decided he wanted to, you know, be as strong in the afterlife that he was in this life. And there were in fact over 8,000 of them each with a unique face and in fact you know, they were over six foot tall. So I think they're quite striking. These aren't quite as large, but they're great focal points in this spot. And that's important in a Chinese design. You've got to have ornamentation that represents the rich Chinese heritage. It's time for planting, as the team fill in this empty garden with the lush foliage plants. These plants were chosen for the ornamental nature of their leaves. The planting in the courtyard space is dense, while that in the driveway is more spread out giving an idea of space. The taller trees are positioned against the boundary wall, making a delicate screen. Remember, cutting around the base of the bag, yet keeping the plant in the bagged soil, gives it a good start, as this soil is full of nutrients. Make sure you've sprinkled your phosphates, such as wonder bone meal, at the bottom of the hole you've dug, so the roots can get feeding immediately, and water well. Back in the courtyard, the team plants the low-growing shrubs, in this case, the Nandina domestica pygmia, commonly known as dwarf sacred bamboo. This plant is hardy and will thrive in any growing condition, although it prefers moist, well-drained soil and it tolerates dense shade. Tim, this deck has really added something. This place has changed completely. It has. Wood's always great for any garden because it adds Absolutely. a sense of warmth and, of course, the, the stones that were here before and were fairly old and aged, so this is a huge improvement. It is a, um, a teak deck, and so it's a high-quality deck. It's also forming part of quite a focal area with respect to the classical Chinese garden that we're trying to emulate in this area because we've created a pavilion behind me, oh, and there's also the bridge, and those are fundamentals in Chinese landscaping. Now tell me, there's a wet area behind you, and I see you've planted arums. You've chosen that because it can handle the water? Absolutely. This is the overflow area for when it rains and the water feature gets mm. too full. So this area is fairly damp, especially in summer when it rains a lot. And we've included both Australian viola and the arum lilies, and they absolutely love water. So you're going to see they're going to really flourish in this area. Oh, they're really looking quite good. We've also got the Tang ladies directly behind me. I don't know if you saw no, that. Somebody as a, said you're a bit of a ladies' man. <laughs> they are beautiful. They're a focal point. I've they never are, quite I'd seen imagine. anything like them. Apparently, the noble woman back way back in China used to, you know, be buried with them so that they had some form of company in the afterlife. Oh, okay. So, Not slaves, but company. Well, I'm sure there was, it was a bit of both, <laughs> bit of I'm both. sure. <laughs> okay, absolutely. We've also got this uh, pre-existing lantern here. It's not great, but it does have a bit of an uh, eastern feel to it. Uh, I'm a bit torn. It, it does match the, the Tang ladies to a degree, but so, at the same time, so I think... you're not going to paint it, or you're not I, sure yet? I'm a bit torn. I think okay. we're going to go, as we go along, I'll probably make a decision on it, but uh, it's going to have to stay. So we're yeah. going to have to work with it and make sure that, that we win with it. And that's often the challenge we're faced when we landscape. You know, you've got an existing garden, that you're working with absolutely and you've got to work with the old and then bring in the new and together have a winning solution but, for it i mean so far it's looking absolutely magic those those pots at the doorway really add as well they do there's a lot of focal points and i think we're, we're well on our way yeah we're about to finish the last bit of planting and, and then it's a matter of tweaking the area and just making the fine adjustments to it excellent well let's get on with it man the garden is looking really good but we're still faced with this green very green koi pond, but we've got the solution. Effective of a product called Pond Clear, 
Now, the first question you've got to ask is, is it safe to use around pond fish? The answer very simply is yes, not a problem at all. First thing we've got to do is understand how much water is in this pond. So very simple measurement, length by the breadth times the depth times a thousand liters gives you your volume in liters. Okay, so we understand that this pond is 2,500 liters. We need a teaspoonful of pond clear in 500 liters of water. So we start off by pre-diluting it. So we get a bit of the pond water, dilute your, in, for 2,500 liters would be five, five spoonfuls, pre-dilute it, and then we distribute it evenly over the entire pond. Simple as that. The water in the koi pond needed drastic attention, and Effecto Pond Clear will sort out the murky waters by controlling the algae. To add to the art pieces and hard landscaping, whitewash pebbles are brought in as a feature to enhance the space in front of the terracotta soldiers. These little stones are great to use in any garden, as they don't need much maintenance to keep them looking good. This garden is really coming together well right now. If you remember at the beginning when we started off, this area, it, it, was, it was just nothing. There was nothing yet to look at that was pretty. I was actually quite concerned because I was, you know, how are we going to make this soft? How are we going to make it inviting? And I think it's really, really working out well. One of the things we've done here is we've brought in these whitewashed pebbles and they're really great. I think we do it quite frequently in gardens, but it's actually also a Chinese concept. The Chinese call it a silent river and it really just adds quite a stark contrast to the rich greenery that you find in the garden. Keep in mind that uh, you don't have a lot of flowers in a Chinese garden, so the white pebbles just allow for color contrast in quite a strong way. We've got a couple of minutes to go before the homeowner arrives, and uh, it's quite exciting because I think he's going to be absolutely gobsmacked when he sees the finished result. The team are in the final stages of planting in the driveway space. Formium rubra is used as a filler plant in this area. The red leaves give a punch of color, much needed in this formerly empty driveway. A row of Carex Gold, a low ground shrub, is planted, and it makes a good contrast to the red foliage used around it. The Chinese often use a landscape principle called borrowing a view in their gardens. And basically what this is, is that they will take something outside the landscape that they're working on, and they'll incorporate it within the view. And they may take a tree, they may take a mountain or a river outside and make sure that somehow it forms part of the landscape within. So if you look, I've tried to incorporate that in our landscape as well. If you stand in this courtyard area and you look out through the door behind me, you can see that the three large, large pots are standing there. And so in a way, the door frames that view and it becomes a part of this landscape. It's quite exciting. It's a very subtle texture that we add to the landscape, but it is in fact very Chinese again. In fact, if I had to complete it, I'd want to knock down that square door and really make it into a round moon window, and that would be a perfect Chinese design. Now, the guys are busy planting a chorus gold down there. That's a great backdrop to those golden brown pots. It highlights and accentuates them perfectly, and I think that driveway is going to be very intriguing indeed once we're done. With all the larger plants in, the team are hard at work finishing the garden. Lamium is used as a ground cover alongside the deck. The guys fertilize well, ensuring that every plant in this garden survives the transplanting process. Tim has decided that the lantern needs a lick of paint. Using fire engine red, the bland lamp is now a striking feature in the garden, fitting to the Chinese theme. And then the driveway garden gets the final touch. Using enormous clay pots, this garden has been completely transformed. So Tim, you're telling me that the Chinese people use this to store grain in? That's right, Andre. They use it for grain. They glaze it on the outside so Very that uh, mice and rats can't run up it and then they put a big cloth over the top to protect it. On the inside, it's also glazed so that it keeps it dry and it's hygienic, of course. But aren't they beautiful? They are gorgeous, Love absolutely them. gorgeous. Now, to change the subject completely, you're very familiar with this product, this Nutrigator. We love this product, Andre. You know, at Abacus Gardens, we started using it for our clients about two years ago. Okay. And this effect on Nutrigator is spectacular. You know, we're always looking for new ways of doing things when we do installations for clients. And yeah. the value added by this effect on Nutrigator is phenomenal. Your check's in the mail. Now, 
the, the, the success behind this product is really the ingredients that goes into it. That's right. Because all this does is it pumps nutrients into your irrigation system, which then feeds your plants every time you water. It's kind of an automatic washing you know, machine. You know what I tell the clients? I say to them, while they're sleeping, yeah. you know, the garden's busy being fed. And that's exactly what's happening. Exactly. I mean, that's it's a being great way of putting pumped it. into the irrigation system as they sleep. And, you know, we've had gardens. I've got a client in Northcliff in particular that I can think of. And that client did not have an instant installation whatsoever. Okay. But her garden within three months looked like it had been established for at least three years. Oh, we love hearing that. Now, of course, the clients must have been following this recipe very successfully. Because there's three products we use in here. The Wonder Soil Conditioner, one to bio boost and one to sol. That's right. And yes. on the lid, it tells you exactly when to use which product. So out of this, you'll get an immune booster. You'll get the product that it feeds, obviously, the nutrition. So it looks after the general health of the plant while boosting the plant's health. Great. I mean, what more can you ask? Absolutely. And you know what's great about it, too? Of course, it's organic. And Absolutely. everybody's going greener and Absolutely. more organic. So it adds value to the garden in so many respects. And we really do try and encourage every single client to include it as part of the irrigation system. Well, we better go and sell this to Fred. Eh? Uh, you know what? Fred's already getting one, so that's the great thing, yeah. Excellent. After the break, the completed garden gets some much needed watering, and Andre is happy with the end product. Start off kind of bland here, you know, nothing much there. But just look at the transformation. <laughs> Welcome back to Designer Garden. With the amount of fertilizer and additives that have gone into this garden, a good soaking is essential to ensure it all gets down to the roots. Tim, what a wonderful garden. You say Chinese? I think you've delivered Chinese, especially that little red lantern. That really is Chinese. Is that your favorite part of the garden? No, there's so many little things in this garden that really intrigues me. I love those statues. OK, well, I must tell you, I love Chinese, all things Chinese. I love traveling to the east. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whenever you think of Chinese gardens, you think of peace, you think of tranquility. And I think we've We've managed to achieve that in this space. I think so, very definitely. We had this objective to create a reason to linger and to pause here, being the entrance of the home, most people just rush straight through to the front door. And I think uh, I'm looking forward to Fred's response. I'd like to see whether he lingers and pauses in, the, you know, in this area. I'm sure you will. I believe you also have a gift for the homeowner. That's right, Andre. We at Abacus Gardens are going to be giving Fred three months worth of free garden maintenance. We'd like to ensure that these plants grow in exactly the way we've intended so that this Chinese garden just improves and takes on the character of the whole Chinese theme more and more. Yes, now, you've installed a Nutrigator. So as to help you maintain the garden, we'll be giving you three months worth of product to go along with that. That'll be great. And in addition, I've got one little product here. Because he's got such an expansive driveway there. Now, this product is called No Weed Paving. It is a non-selective herbicide. So any little weed that might crop up, spray them, within days they're gone. Oh, that's fantastic. I think he's going to be very happy with that. Absolutely. Listen, well done again. Thank Excellent job. And we'll see you on the next one. Yeah, see you next week. Cool, man. The area behind me is right at the end of the driveway. Start off quite a bland area, you know, nothing much there. But just look at the transformation, the plantings, the very colorful carrots with its gold leaves. Of course, they've used iceberg roses, which have softened the area quite a bit. And to give you height, there's lots of trees being put in. And of course, these vats, aren't they just magnificent? Grain storage vats made out of clay, wonderful little touch. The design of this front garden was very much a Chinese garden. And I think that's been accomplished really well. The elements they brought in, you know, the big vases, the little statues, all that 
adds that Chinese feel to it. But of course the plantings, not only for their symbolism, but also appropriate plants for the right places. You know, plants can handle the shade, plants that can handle the wet areas, and of course the koi pond, that just adds that air of tranquility about the garden. And I think that's something that's really important and has been done really well. But let's have a chat to Fred. Let's see what he thinks about his garden. I'm afraid your brief was an Asian-inspired garden. Does this work for you? Yeah, absolutely, Andre. I think it's it's come out uh, really nice. You know, even though it's very specifically Chinese, it still works. Yeah, initially a little bit apprehensive about the Chinese bit, um, but I think it works very nicely. Yeah, I think it's a magic garden. What about that red lamppost? You're going to keep that? Yeah, I think it adds a feature. I, I definitely think it. it very it, Chinese, though. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> and of course, right across, you've got that other area at the end of your driveway which they've created a very nice garden with those big vats, which I believe is used to store grain. Yeah, I, I, what I really like is the two distinct gardens, but linked, you know, Absolutely. so there's definitely continuity. Fred, I'm so glad you're pleased. Thanks Thank for you having very us. much. Thank you. Andrew. And enjoy your garden. I will do. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, man. Cheers, Ed. What a wonderful project this has been. The Abacus team have turned this into a spectacular little garden. The homeowners pleased. I hope you are too. Please join us again on another designer garden. Designer Garden was proudly brought to you by Wonder and Effecto.